So here we are in the Baltimore Ravens draft room. It's gonna be a different year this year. We're gonna have 10 people in the room. We have the ability to pretty much do everything now electronically. This is actually the front board. So all the draftable players, we'll have about 200 draftable players on this board. They're ranked, it's a horizontal and vertical board. So we'll have the top players at the top by position. We'll have position groups at the top of the board and the players will be ranked going down the board in their uh, evaluation columns, their grade columns. We also rank the board uh, horizontally. So we'll have the individual columns, the position groups, but we'll have all the players across the board at their grade levels uh, sorted basically as well. This board we call the side board. We'll probably have 500 names on this board. Same thing, by grade, by position, top to bottom. This is typically when the third day of the draft we start to see players get drafted off this board. Uh, most of our picks, almost all of our picks, will be on this board right here. Draft table, biggest draft table we've ever had. I will uh, sit right here at the head of the table. Uh, my guess is Ozzy's gonna sit this year over here at this table, um, probably by himself. Uh, Steve Bishotti will probably sit right here. John Harbaugh will probably sit here or here. Dick Cass will be over here. You'll probably have George Kokinas somewhere over here. Nick Matteo, who does a lot of salary cap for us and trades, will be over here somewhere. Pat Moriarty will be usually pretty close to me. He used to do the trades. He'll be somewhere over here. Joe Hortiz will be over here. So this will be a trade calculator. So as trades come in, we'll have the ability, if teams call us, we'll have the ability to show the trades, show the points, get a sense for if it's a good trade or a bad trade very, very quickly without doing a lot of math. I wasn't a very good math student in high school. This does all the math for us. This will be the phone a lot of times that that will ring for me. Teams call in, hey, we wanna, we wanna make a trade. I answer the phone, hey, what's going on? How you doing? Talk about the trade, strengths and weaknesses um, of the trade, discuss it with your group. We'll have some other phones in here as well. This is usually a treasure trove of snacks in here. Got some Gatorade, got some mints, but we usually have a lot of different things in here. Usually a lot of candy, usually chips and things. We've really cleaned it out because of COVID. Food is a very, very important part of the draft process, especially for Joe Hortiz and Pat Moriarty. Uh, this is last year's draft board as the players came off. Given the numbers of the amount of people in here, this job is being actually phased out. You had to have outstanding penmanship to have this job. It was a contest every single year. This will be on draft day erased. We'll use this just to write things down. Um, but we're gonna do this electronically on one of these old other screens. This is old school. This goes back to the old facility. I had to use this because obviously I'm not the tallest guy in the world. And when we would move cards back in the day when we had the electronic magnets, I would have to use this. So I would climb up and we were taking a guy, bringing him down the board. I'd climb up, I'd grab his card, put him where he needs to go. We keep it in here as almost like an artifact. We don't really need it now because everything's electronic. This guy is also special. This is Jermaine the Giraffe. And this was a gift uh, that my son Michael got when he was born. He's got a long neck, obviously. And we always tell the scouts to stick your necks out when you're talking about a player. So it's just a little bit of a reminder to stick your neck out, to fight for your guys, to be convincing, and to speak with conviction. Here we go. This is something that I actually heard Nick Saban say, the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. So if you talk about these players, a lot of times it's very easy to overlook the past, hoping for better results. And what we find a lot is that the past is actually the best indicator. A guy's behavior, his past performance on the field is really the best predictor for us to know what the guy's gonna do moving forward. I will, I'll miss my family. Yeah, I'm gonna miss the boys. They got so into it last year. They were really a part of it. Uh, they loved it. They loved hearing the phone calls. They loved being a part of everything. And seeing themselves on TV was kind of cool. There were a few times when they saw themselves on ESPN, which was a fun thing for a, a small kid. 
So yeah, it was really nice to be able to spend the, uh, the weekend with them. I wouldn't say that I would want to draft that way every single year, but to have that experience of actually doing it with my family, spending that time last year with my family, was a memory that, you know, we'll always have. Getting back to where we were, you know, pre-COVID, we're excited about that, we embrace it. It's gonna be awesome, can't wait. And uh, we know we're gonna have a great draft.